Welcome to this gorgeous little setup. And you can see how I've orchestrated those colors with those beautiful gray green stripes and uh, the vase with its um, lovely shadow and light. And you can see I've got the artificial light on it, which creates such beautiful contrasts and where the light's hitting everything from the side there. I'm going to choose that orange there to um, be the focal point and really pop the color against all the other neutral colors. And that back orange is a little bit more in shadow, so the foreground orange will really sort of pop against everything else. So it's very simple, but it should be really effective. So one of the things we've got to be very wary about is by placing these elements all spaced differently so that you don't get this very uniform look. So just by placing that little line behind, you're actually changing the distances between things. The one thing I really did like though was the negative space between the line and the vase. So I think I'll just leave it at that. And from the angle I'm at, it's really gorgeous. Without the light, it becomes a little bit uh, less interesting. Still could be, it could still work beautifully, but the light just changes it completely and adds another element to push and pull colors and just play that light against the darks. Okay, so zooming out and I've got two boards here. One of them is um, canvas stuck on MDF board and the other is just a gesso board. The gesso board has got a nice rough texture um, and the canvas is much smoother. Okay, so I'm going to show you two different ways of drawing onto a canvas um, and why I choose the way I choose to do things. Just using a little bit of um, Gamsel or odorless terps and Winsor Newton burnt sienna. I'm going to just uh, create a washy sort of um, drawing uh, medium so I can just draw with very washy paint. I'm also showing you here the um, glass on my trolley which I bought at IKEA. I think I have done a video on this before but just to show you again um, the color the neutral gray is divine because it enables your your other colors to show up more truly against the neutral background on a white um, palette your colors will appear a lot darker so then when you put them on your canvas you've got a sort of a skewed um, perception of them whereas when they put against the gray that you can actually see their vibrancy very truly and this is how I set up all my paints so just um, I'm going to have a look at what I'm doing. I'm going to try and do the drawing. So I've got to take the size of my canvas into account. And I can see that I've got a setup that's sort of more rectangle than square. But I'll have to place elements into that square to see how I can get them to work. So if I start drawing and I, I put my do a beautiful drawing and I put my big vase in and I find I haven't got enough space for one of the elements, then I'm a bit stuck and I've got to start all over again. This is why I'm not such a fan of drawing with line. I actually love to draw with mass. So I get as big a brush as I'm comfortable with for the area, make it very washy, and I start to just create an idea of where I think that shape could be. The great thing about this way of working as well is you can wipe it off and, 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 and re-establish um, areas and shapes. See, I've got a wet wipe there. The other great thing is it's easier for my mind. Some people are much better at, at line drawing than I am, but it's easier for my mind to judge distances and shapes if I can see the whole shape and if I can sort of um, gauge the space it takes rather than a line around it. My mind seems to work a lot better that way. So that's why I prefer, prefer to use that way of doing things. So I can start to make sure I can fit everything in by just basically indicating shapes with, with, with mass and um, filling them in. Then when I'm, I'm sort of sure I might have everything in the right place or I think it's going to work, that's when I can start becoming a little bit more specific. So I put that little lime in to make sure I've got enough space for it on the side of the board and I don't want it too close. So I can come in and re 
uh, calibrate it and then sort of move it across if it's too big. So there's me sort of trying to judge distances and shapes and, uh, and work it out at this stage. And everything's so fluid, everything's so movable, I can wipe off, I can make sure that, that I'm comfortable, move things closer if it's going to fit easier and and nothing's sort of set in stone and that's the wonderful thing about oils because they can be moved around they don't dry so you can keep fiddling and playing and 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 finding um the solution to what you're looking for it's almost like a fluid drawing and it just it just gives you freedom not to be too pedantic and not to get too attached um and also gives you that ability just to recreate, change shapes, change sizes of shapes um, until you've got something that you think will really work. So once you've actually found that you can fit all your elements in, this is when you can come back with your lines and start actually getting your drawing more accurate. Um, because now you know that everything you're going to put on there is actually going to be in the right place and you can start really sort of uh, honing in on those shapes that make those elements um, exciting. So I didn't include the whole painting video here because I just wanted to show you um, the beginning starting up and what to look for in the actual setup of the painting. Just another example of creating a still life because the setup is so important and it's part of the whole design process. So just a quick synopsis of this little still life. Where the darkest dark meets the lightest light is where the light on the pair is meeting the vase and that's creating your focal point. You've also got the light on that orange leading to the light in the pair. So that's also creating your eye going through the painting to actually move your eye to that focal point. Um, it's just full of colour, the shadows on the actual tablecloth are beautiful and also create that sense of dark and light and contrast and these are very simple shapes for anyone to do so setting up lots of different little still lifes that, like this can be a really really good process to get yourself to um, take time to learn about mixing colors to get your spaces between objects right, to really work on composition, to keep moving things around, keep experimenting, but just keep it simple. This is also a space where you can start experimenting with your application of paint as well, using thin paint, adding palette knife, um, using pattern, different color combinations, Whatever you choose, this is where your creativity can really come in and this is where your unique style of painting can be experimented on and worked on.